Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady here with my top two picks for the month of March here from my Zone 7 Central North Carolina garden. Now, I know this month I'm a little bit heavy on the trees and shrubs, but I can't help it. I developed this garden when I was working as a propagator of rare trees and shrubs and I have a, amassed a fairly big collection. So today I wanted to feature one of my all-time favorite, slightly weirdo, not, not so normal that you would find it at a box store, broadleaf evergreen trees called Neolitzia sericea. Neolitzia is an Asian native broadleaf evergreen that's really well suited for warm climates. So I'm kind of zone bending it here in zone seven. Definitely reliable in zone eight. I'm giving you that warning because you can see what happens when it gets too cold. It'll just nip off and um, you'll have to actually do a bit of pruning to clean it up. But one of the reasons I've chosen it for a March plant is because of this new growth. And you can see it's golden and furry. It feels like velvet. I think that it is as pretty as the blooms. But it, this is a plant that does flower. And in fact, you can see it's actually setting its seed right now. It usually oh, blooms in bright the yellow, super fragrant blooms that bees absolutely go nuts over. Now, this has been in the ground for at least a decade, probably 11 years, realistically. You can see I actually let um, gourds and stuff grow up it. And I've not done any pruning to this at all. So it's, you know, grows relatively fast. And I think over time you could expect this to be probably 40 foot tall and 20 foot wide. I definitely think it's suitable for suburban screening, again, in warmer climates. And I just think that it's a, a plant that more people should know about because it really is such extraordinary new growth that I think uh, should be more appreciated. Well, my top pick for well, my top pick for March has to be the redbud. Both our native eastern redbud, Circus canadensis, and the Chinese form, Circus chinensis. Redbuds are an absolutely fantastic tree to grow. I find that they actually do better in part shade. And that really orientation could be eastern exposure where they get more morning sun and late day shade. I have found overall that they perform really well that way and they get established more quickly. If you look along the sides of highways, you'll often see them growing along the edges of woodlands. And that's precisely where they want to be, where they're only getting exposure for a portion of the day, not full sun. However, there's lots of people that grow redbuds in full blazing sun and they do perfectly fine. So um, I think that it's worth giving it a try. Even if you have a, a full sun lot, you could grow some redbuds and see how they do. But it's also a great option for people who struggle with having trees that will flower because they live in too much shade. And that's the big advantage that Circus offers is that they will actually flower even if you have large overstory trees. Now, there's a ton of varieties of red buds available, including some new ones from NC State from Dr. Denny Warner. One of my favorites is Flamethrower. And I'm so sad that my plant died, died from a, a bacterial infection in my soil. But I'm really pleased that this variety, this is Hearts of Gold, has done so well. It's been planted here in the ground. I brought this home as a seven gallon. Uh, it's been here for more, well, like 11 years. And it has beautiful chartreuse foliage all summer long. So not only is it great right now because of the flowers, but in the summer season, it adds this extra interest and in that it has this bright yellow chartreuse color. But my ultimate favorite redbud is definitely Circus chinensis. And I just can't help myself. This is such an incredible specimen. It flowers all along the stems. The bees are completely going nuts. And what I really love about this is that it's primarily sterile, meaning it doesn't set a lot of seed pods. 
Um, I have found that many varieties of, of Circe's canadensis can be very seedy. In fact, my former boss, Dr. Clifford Parks, used to always say that the biggest weed in his garden was the native redbud. In contrast, Circe's chinensis very rarely sets seed, so you don't have to worry about it ever invading any spaces. This is a variety called Don Egoff, named for a former director of the National Arboretum. And you can see it's a multi-stem, kind of small tree. This has been planted also for 11 years. This was planted as a one gallon rooted cutting. And that's one of the other differences between our native redbud and the Chinese species. Circus chinensis roots really easily from tip cuttings, whereas Circus canadensis actually has to be grafted. And then you have to worry about understock developing. So if you see right there, there's a red bud. That's actually one that I grafted. And um, it, it unfortunately hasn't been managed well. And part of the understock, which is the native Circus canadensis, so it's like green leaf form, um, is growing in, in like almost half or three quarters of the tree is the understock. Um, and you know, that, that's a variety that has dark purple foliage. But the understock will actually like suck the energy from the cyan wood and ultimately overcome the desired variety. So if you have a grafted native cultivar, you do need to pay attention to make sure that there's no growth developing from underneath the graft union. And this is actually a really common problem, um, not just in red buds, but with a lot of trees that are grafted. So beware of that because, you know, if you've spent a lot of money on a specific variety, you don't want the seedling understock to overtake it. But this is one of my favorite spots to take a picture right now with the Royal Velvet, the Circus Chinensis Alba, the Circus Chinensis Don Egoff. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this month's top five plants for zone seven in the month of March. It has certainly been my pleasure to walk around the garden and see what is looking prime. And I hope you'll be inspired to grow each of these, especially growing more red buds in your garden. You really can't go wrong for their spring display and ease of growing any time of the year. Well, thanks so much for watching everybody. Happy gardening.